We're doing a Be More News exclusive. Hi, I'm Catalina Bird, host of One Point, and sometimes columnist with Be More News, depending on if Donnie loves me this week or not. And we're doing an impromptu review of the new movie For Colored Girls by Tyler Perry. And we're sitting here with Miss Boone, who is the costume designer, as well as a number of other ladies who've had the opportunity to see it, though they weren't directly involved in the film. We all have experiences as colored girls at some point in time in our lives. What were your feelings about the movie? Janora, did you get a chance to see it yet? I did. Um, I felt that it was a really good movie. There were some mixed reviews, um, but I felt like it was a good movie, and I think that a lot of people were making mentions to, you know, they felt that it was a male bashing thing, but I didn't get that from the movie. I didn't get that. Ms. Boone, as we've already talked about your artistic eye and, and how beautifully that comes to play on the camera, but as a woman, what is it about us, and not just as, as a species or as a race, but in general in our society that makes us unable to uplift one group without feeling like that means we're bashing another? The movie is especially intended to uplift women. But how is it that they took from it these honest male portrayals that we know happen on a day-to-day -day basis was male bashing? Do you, do you know how they get confused like that? I absolutely do. And... Uh it's interesting because my husband and I dialogue with this in depth this morning. He has a completely different take on it. He doesn't feel that it's male bashing at all. He feels as though some brothers need to take responsibility for how they are portrayed, why they're portrayed that way in films is because that's the persona that they uh, put forth. That's who they are and they need to take responsibility for that. That's how it gets a bit twisted because men aren't taking responsibility for the men that are in the film. They're talking about the men in the film, but they're not talking about the women and the issues that the women are having in the film at all. That's, what, that's where the line has been crossed. You have a lot of, uh, of men who are very, very uh, responsible for who they are. They're very respectful of the women that they are with. Their mothers, all the way back to their mothers, their grandmothers, back to their grandmothers, their daughters perhaps, their wives, and, but it's, it's a bit tricky because unfortunately there's a large percentage out there that are on the down low. There are a large percentage out there that are being abusive, whether it's um, physically, emotionally, or just psychologically. And I think that out of this film, perhaps there'll be some support groups that come up to help both genders get to the other side of where they are right now, which is a painful place. Dara, you know, like I know, that the play and the book itself were, were written in the 70s, so it's fair to assume that Michael Easley's character would have at that time been coming home from Vietnam and not Iraq, like is presumed now. What I didn't see was any empathy from any of the women other than his wife for what it was that he was going through. We, we held her accountable for what happened to her children ultimately. But where was the support circle we knew as a community with the health care disparities and education disparities that we have that he was suffering? Where was the maternal figure in that? And how do we make that translate into our communities for so many of these soldiers that are coming home that don't have the mental health support that they need before it gets to an extreme like that? Well, where was the maternal figure? She was probably out on her third job trying to make a living to put food on the table. That's probably where she was. But I think that uh, on a more serious note, that the film adequately portrayed the way we as society do not necessarily give the financial and other resources to our returning veterans that they need. We have conversations about all of the, the veterans coming home with brain injuries and with other injuries. And we are not prepared for that. As a society, we don't know how to deal with it. As a country, we do not give resources to that. If I can speak from for the male bashing, and, and let me say I'm old enough to have seen the original play mm. um, and feel very honored to have done that. And I think now, as I thought then, that the conversation really should not be about the male bashing, but what it should be about is why we have this visceral reaction to it. If we had more positive role modeling in Hollywood for black men, if there were movies, TV shows, and other media that counteracted the message, we would not even be having this conversation about male bashing. The reason that it comes up is because there, there is not that countervailing force culturally that honors, that respects the good black men who are out there and the good black women who support them. Posing a question to the other two ladies. How much of this, when it gets internalized as male bashing, is 
black men not being able to accept for themselves that every oppression that these women suffered that looked like their mothers came at their hand and not the white man. And it makes it that much harder to make it a racial issue when it comes to the upliftment and the empowerment of our women. How much do you think that, that being in denial of the fact that they have added to our own struggle here in America as women of color is a reason why they take it as, oh, you're beating up on me because those weren't white men that raped Danica. Those weren't white men that, that were kept leaving Loretta Devine time and time again and going back to their wife and coming back. Every one of those men looked like our sons, our brothers, our fathers, just like those women looked like their mothers and their sisters. How much of that do you think plays into the psyche of a person who looks at that movie and sees it as male bashing? Mm. Okay. It's very heavy. <laughs> okay. I did not see the, the play, I mean the movie yet. I am going with a few women. But I did see the play, part of it, at the Executive Club in Glen Burnie. Now, I think that part of it is because women seem to stand up and they're strong. And men are supposed to be that strong figure. But because of things that happen through their lives and what they see and the fathers not there, different reasons, when a woman stands up or she seems like she's moving, then it plays on them. And then they have to knock you back down so they can feel that they're, you know, in charge. Now, um, so we actually need to support our men, support them, and let them know that we are there for them. Um, and get them to realize who you are, who you are as a person and get him to love you for you and let him know you love him for him and once you get past that barrier then it's even he's not trying to then overcome you um, the it's hard it's a struggle and we women do go through a lot of hurt and a lot of abuse it is up to you and you do need to take take ownership for it because you can get out, but God says honor your husband. God says to support him and be submissive. He doesn't believe in divorce unless you are being abused and there's a part, but he doesn't believe in a divorce. So we have to help our husband to believe in himself and let him know that he is king. And then, you know, the women can We'll be, all, we'll be okay. So it's basically teaching him. I, I agree with some of what you're saying. I think that one of the things that we've sustained in the black community is a loss of family, family unity. I think it really all starts from there. I mean, I go back, and I did see the original play as well, but I go back to my own upbringing here in East Baltimore where there was families intact. You know, mother, father, grandparents, uh, aunts, uncles. I think that a lot of what women experience really is a result of what happens in that family unity. And I think the disunity that we are experiencing in the black community, that we continue to experience, um, the, that that has a real impact on us. Um, I think that while we certainly got through slavery by somehow keeping ourselves intact. When we got in urban settings, it's been a challenge that maybe we've not been able to overcome. And I think that all of that really does cause a lot of the problems that we continue to see. I think one of the reasons that those of us who are maybe thriving in the black community have that many others don't is that strong family unity. And I don't mean just people who are related to you. I mean, people who you've embraced uh, as part of your family, they can be friends. Uh, it's more an attitude. It's more um, understanding and a giving and, and love. I think we're losing love. Clearly the discussion could go on and on as we talked about not just what goes on in the movie but the issues that the movie brings up. We recommend it for everyone and there'll be an opportunity to comment on Be More News and share your thoughts and your reviews after you've seen it. We'd definitely like to know myself and or Donnie. So in the meantime, this is Catalina Bird, host of On Point, and this is Be More News, the news before the news where we uncover the truth.